Okay. Um, I just, my, the title of mine is Hop to It, um, Raising Rabbits for Beginners. We have a lot to cover, guys. Rabbits is such a unique project in the fact that instead of going in the ring and being quiet the whole time, you have to actually go up and present. You have to be a public speaker, right? You have to present, you have to check your rabbit. Um, and it's super great practice if you're gonna be like say a vet or something because you're checking their ears, you're checking their eyes, their nose, their, you're checking for abscesses, you're checking for any types of diseases. And you're saying why you enjoy, um, why you enjoy your rabbits, why you enjoy showing. So um, rabbits is just a little bit different than other livestock in that um, that you're actually getting up there and presenting. Um, why raise rabbits? Why do you guys think? Like, why do people around the world raise rabbits? Sarah? Um, to like, uh keep them as a pet or even like the eat to eat them like meat rabbits mm -hmm. what a, oh Josie um for kids for pets for kids for pets that's a great answer anybody else did they start out as pets Avery for their wool and to sell. For their wool and to sell, yep. Okay, so um, the first reason is meat. A lot of people eat, um, eat rabbit. Research laboratories. Um, so I don't know why I have that on there, but pets, when you sell, if you're selling as a pet, you want to make sure to sell as a complete package. Does anybody know why? And as a complete package, I mean, you want to include like their water bottle, their food, or just a little baggie of food, and maybe some information about rabbits. Sarah? So you can like maybe like start them off or like show them like what feed? Mm-hmm. Um, so that she's exactly right. So you can show them, you can give them a little bit of the food that they're used to. Um, honestly, if you send them with their water that they're used to, it stresses them out just a little bit less. Um, the other thing is, um, so that you can tell people about your rabbits and how they're raised. You can show that you are a quality breeder or you're a quality provider you have given this rabbit the best care that you could have possibly given it and they're going into a good life from a good life, right? So you want to be a responsible um, responsible rabbit raiser or breeder if you're doing the breeding. Um, people buy them for reptiles and I raised Flemish Giants. They were like this big. They were about 30 pounds each. I know it says like 21 pounds on there. They were, they were 30 or over. Mine were big and people would come up to me at fair all the time and they want to buy my rabbits for, um, because they had snakes and the bigger the rabbit, the less of rabbits they'd have to buy, right? Because if you have a smaller rabbit, they'd have to buy more of them. So that's actually a huge one. Super sad, I think, but it's fine. <laughs> um, zoos, people buy them for their fur year. You were exactly right. I think Avery said it. Um, people buy them for their fur and for their manure. Gardeners love rabbits. They love rabbit manure. Okay, um, before we really start, I'm just real quick going to talk about record keeping. It is so important, and especially as a rabbit raiser, that you are keeping records. If you are doing this, um, if you are wanting to do this in the future for like a career, you need to make sure you keep records because the margins are smaller than in a bigger animal. So just a little bit, the more you spend, if you just spend just a little bit over, you're not going to make any, any profit. So it's super important that you're keeping um, records. And also then you have an idea of when, if you are breeding a rabbit, you have an idea of when you're breeding a rabbit, you know, 30 days, you should go to the vet if, if they're not, um, if they haven't had their babies. 
Um, so record keeping is really important for that side of it. Five freedoms. You as rabbit raisers, and not just rabbit, any livestock, you're responsible for this animal, right? You have a responsibility to, um, to give them these five things. And this actually came from a Canada 4-H rabbit website. So um, the freedom from hunger and thirst, freedom from discomfort, freedom from pain, injury, or disease, freedom to express their normal behavior, and freedom from fear or distress. If your rabbit is afraid of you, do you think you're raising it? Like, do you think you're being very nice to it? Maybe not. Um, so, and freedom to express normal behavior, you can't cram them in just this little tiny box and expect them to not try and get out. They are, you know, they get claustrophobic too. So you have to make sure that you're, you're providing them with these things. If they're hungry, if they're thirsty, if they don't feel safe, um, that's on you. Figure out, let's figure out how to make them um, free from those things. Getting started. Okay, when you get a when you get a rabbit, there's a few things you need. Um, you need a cage, food, um, sticks, or something for them to chew on. Do any of you guys know why that's important for a rabbit? Anybody? You can just hop on and say if you know. Um, rabbits' teeth grow continuously throughout their life, and if they don't have something to chew on, then they will, their teeth will get too long and will be unhealthy. Absolutely. That's absolutely the reason. They will overgrow, and some of them, um, if they don't have something to chew on other than your pellets, their teeth can grow down to here, and they can curl around, and so not super great but super important for you to know as a rabbit owner, um, if that's happening. Oops, let's go back, hold on. Can you guys still see that full screen? Yes, we can. Yes, okay. Um, hold on one second, I'm having some technology things. It's fine. Uh, okay, um, we'll just keep going. Okay, housing and facilities. Oh, let's actually go back. Okay, um, water. So water bottles are the best for rabbits. Um, water bottles are the best because if, especially if you have a bigger rabbit, um, they, when it gets hot, they tend to lay in their water bowls. Not only could they drown in their water bowls, but, um, if they have a big dewlap and they're laying it in there, they'll get sores on their dewlap. And um, eventually their dewlap can just stick to their stick to their chin. And their dewlap is supposed to be completely separate. So it's really important. Um, it's really important to have probably a water bottle, and especially for the larger ones. And toys. Um, make sure they're safe toys. If they're chewing on plastic, they're probably going to end up eating the plastic. If they are chewing, if there's a little, um, when we first got our rabbits, we got these little like cat balls, you know, the ones that cats kind of flit around. Um, they have little bells in them and your rabbit can swallow that bell. And if they swallow it and if, you know, they could choke on it, so that's not super safe. Try and make it something that they can, um, they could chew on like a felt ball. They can have sticks in there. Um, and honestly, they don't even need toys. It's just kind of a nice thing for them, right? Housing and facilities. Um, okay, let's talk about you guys' cage. Do you guys all have rabbits? Yes, some of you. Okay, so if you have rabbits, depending on the size of your rabbit, you'll need two to three feet by two to three feet of cage space per animal. So you need kind of a big area for them to roam, roam around in. Um, 
This provides protection from predators and environments. It got really, I don't know about you guys, it got really cold here in Uinta County. And um, those rabbits just aren't meant to handle that kind of cold, okay? Um, if you are breeding, you need to have some kind of nesting box for them. Um, and you also need housing, you need, uh, I don't know why this is in there, but hay cubes and sticks. Um, again, those chew down their teeth. Lighting. So it's actually important for your rabbit to, to get some kind of light, especially if you're breeding. Um, this can trigger them to have babies or not have babies. Um, if you're, if you're breeding your animal, your animal may not get pregnant if you're trying to breed it if it, if there's no light in there. So just something interesting for you guys to think about. And you need also a solid floor in there. How many of you guys have smaller animals, smaller rabbits? Smaller? So I had a big rabbit. It was again, like this big and it's hawks just got big sores on it. Um, from sitting in its cage. The wires cut into their hawks if they're, if they're big and even if they're small sometimes and it will take the fur off of their hawks and it will create a sore right there. Um, it's super common. A lot of rabbits have it. Most, most of the time judges will not um, dock you for that because there's not a whole lot of way to prevent that. They will, um, if, they, if their sore hawks get super bad, um, they will only put their feet up like this. And so you need some kind of solid floor for them to stand on so that um, to get some relief from the wire cutting into their hawks. Um, and ventilation, it's important to have ventilation for us, for them. Okay. So real quick, Natasha, you need to open up your screen. It looks like you're, like you're editing your slides. Oh, okay, hold on one second. Hold on, um, slideshow, hide slide, and hide slide. Give me one second, guys, so I can make this presentation stop share. Okay, let's go there. Okay. In the meantime, I see that we have two people join us. Um, there are D tags as Betty Cuffets and Paige iPhone. Can you introduce yourselves real quick? So I know where I can mark you down for attendance. I am just one of the coordinators in Duchesne County. So, oh, okay, perfect. But no, nothing about rabbits. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Um, I'm just like interested in showing rabbits, so. Nice, and what's your name and where, what town are you from? Okay, can you guys see that now? Yes, okay. Sorry, my computer has been messing up all week, so. Okay, um, back on track. It's good that you guys joined us. We love to have you. Um, Make sure not to free feed or overfeed. Um, your rabbit will get fat, overweight, not good for the rabbit, not good for the standard of perfection. Um, don't leave unused food out because food loses its nutritional value. Um, make sure to provide something to chew on. Hay cubes are great and also sticks. They love chewing on those. And make sure to keep your food dry and insect free. I don't know about you. I don't really want insects while I'm munching on my Cheerios, neither do your rabbits. 
I mean, I don't think they do. Okay. Um, for the small breeds, two to three ounces of pellets per day. Uh, for larger breeds, four to nine ounces of pellets per day. Uh, I always scoop just about a cup or so, but that's for the bigger rabbits too. And we would feed about half a cup twice a day. You want to feed your rabbits twice a day um, just to space it out a little bit. Their stomachs, um, their stomachs are smaller, so they digest a little faster than some of the larger animals, so they don't just eat once a day, they eat twice a day. Um, some, some people recommend for the smaller ones to feed three times a day. Two times a day is usually what most people do that in my experience. So uh, make sure that you're on your pellets. Does everybody know how to read nutrition labels? Raise of hands, no? So on the nutrition labels on the back, there will be a place that it says how much fiber is in, is in um, your feed, how much fat and how much calcium. These are the three things that are super important. You want 12 to 22% of fiber, 3% or less of fat, and less than 1% of calcium. Okay, um, we're gonna go on to breeds and body types. This is, rabbits come in many shapes and sizes. Why do you guys think it's important to know other breeds and body types other than your own? Anybody? Avery, do you have an answer? Yeah. Oh, hold on, you're on mute. Go ahead. Because you might get a different rabbit with it, and you, I forgot. Yeah. So when I was a senior in high school, um, I was showing at County Fair and they actually had to switch rabbits. I switched and I showed a little tiny rabbit like this. And I had this big rabbit like this. Um, the only difference between me and the other showmen was I knew other breed types and how to show them. Um, there are, if you guys, can you guys see my pointer? Probably not. Yes, can. Oh, you can see my pointer? Sweet. Um, okay, so there are five types of body types. There's cylindrical, semi-arch, commercial, which is like, commercial would be like your ideal meat kind of rabbit, um, compact and full arch. Okay. So there are two, you guys can see kind of the ideal. So the semi-arch has a hump in the back. Um, the full arch is standing up. And how you're gonna show your rabbit is based on your rabbit type. If you have a Flemish giant, you have a semi-arch rabbit. And you should be showing with its feet both on the ground, kind of tucked under it. Um, when you have a cylindrical rabbit, it's going to be fully stretched out, but its feet still have to be under it. If you have a full arch, you want that, that rabbit standing to attention, okay? Um, compact needs to be really small, and the commercial is also going to be small. With all of these types, except for the full arch, the feet need to be tucked underneath the body. Um, you don't really want to see the feet really a whole lot. So for the one that's the white rabbit, what kind do you guys think, what rabbit body type do you think that is? Colette, Sarah, Josie, Avery, Tommy. Oh, actually Josh, anybody? Benny? Which one do you guys think the, what body type do you think the white rabbit is? You can even put it in the comments if you want. Commercial? Commercial? Yes, it is commercial. What about the 
the gray bunny below that. Semi-arch? Semi-arch, yep, that's a Flemish giant. Okay, what about the next one that I just pulled up? The spotted one. Compact? Compact. Yes. Sorry, I didn't, I don't know why that one looks so hard. That one, that one should be fairly easy. Cylindrical. Cylindrical, yes. And fun fact about cylindrical, there is only one breed that has cylindrical type. And that, in the last one? Full arch, full arch. Full arch. Awesome. Good job, Colette. Okay. Um, contact bo compact body types. Um, Lilac, Cavana, American Fuzzy Lop, English Angora, Holland Lops, if you have a Mini Lop, a Mini Rex, a Mini Satin, Netherland Dwarf, Polish Silver, Florida White, um, a Hotote, any of those ones are going to be your compact. And you're going to show them like I showed you um, back here. You're going to show them like that. They should look roughly like that body does right there from the side. Commercial body types. Angora is champagne to argent. I was very set on having one of those. I never did. Cinnamon, French Lop, um, New Zealand, Rex, American Sable, Satin, Silver Fox, Silver Martin. Um, these ones are pretty specific because they are... Um, because these are usually the ones that are raised for meat, they're, they get pretty picky with them. So they want to see, it should kind of have a circle and then right at the edge, it should go down. So it should be just kind of an oval there. And then from the top, so on this picture, it said says depth equals width, depth plus width equals length. The high point of the hip is located at two thirds of the length. So like right there, that's the high point. And then um, the depth at shoulder is three fourths of the hip. When you get to Arba showing, they are super picky um, with these types because they are very specific on how they want them bred. Um, Semi-arch body types, American, oops, sorry. American Brethren, English Lop, Flemish Giant, um, let's go ahead. Oop. Full arch body types, Belgian hair, Brit, mm, I can't say that, Britannia, Petite, Checker Giant, English Sport, Rhinelander, and Tan. So if I were to show this rabbit, how I showed my Flemish Giant, which was the semi-arch type, do you think I would do very well? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs down, thumbs down, because that's not the way that rabbit is supposed to be showed. That's not the ideal for that rabbit, okay? Um, and the cylindrical, the only one is the Himalayan on that list. So I'm gonna talk about fur types and it's easiest to show this video here, actually. Um, Hold on one second. Let me pull this up. Um, okay, so normal rabbit fur um, is the most common rabbit fur classification. Um, the majority of the different breeds of rabbit have normal rabbit fur. Within this type, there is the flyback type or the rollback type. And I'll play this video here in just a second um, and we'll see the difference between them. There's the Rex rabbit fur type. Um, I usually call that, I've always called that plush, but you could call it Rex fur type. Um, it's one of the rarest types of fur and there's only two currently Arba classified breeds that contain this, this fur type. It's highly sought after. And so for that breed, the fur has more points than the, than the body does. Um, if you, if you go to arba.com, um, Jessica can actually link that in the show notes. 
or in the in the chat there. ARBA is American Rabbit Breeders Association. ARBA is basically the place you're going to go to for any rabbit standards. So if you're looking at your animal, um, you want to get the, the ARBA book um, because ARBA is going to have the breed standards and they break it out by points. So the feet are worth seven points for my rabbit. Um, the body was worth 35, the head is worth seven. And each area, if you, if you have the perfect rabbit, you would get a hundred points, right? So each part is broken out into points of how much that rabbit is worth. Um, so for the Rex rabbit, it's gonna, it's gonna dig it pretty bad if you don't have really good fur for that. Um, it's known to have softer and more velvety texture for a coat. It doesn't roll back or forward really, it's just plush. You can just kind of play with it and it'll stay wherever your hand goes. And the satin rabbit fur type. It is, um, the fur on a satin rabbit fur coat is generally much softer than normal fur. Similar to the Rex rabbit fur classification, there's only two breeds of rabbit which possess the satin fur, the satin and the mini satin. And then there's the wool rabbit fur type. Um, sometimes it's referred to as simply the Angora rabbit fur as indicated by its name. Uh, wool rabbit fur is quite similar to the fur found on sheep. However, it's been proven to be of higher density. So we're gonna go ahead and play this video. And I'm not actually going to have the... Um, I am not going to have the sound on it. Hold on. Okay. So if you look at him checking out his rabbit, he's going back. When you check the fur, you're actually going to pet your rabbit in the opposite direction. You need to know this for show. What he's doing right now, you're checking its fur. Okay. So. This one is going to have rollback fur. See how it kind of sticks in place for a minute before going back? Let me see. Hold on, let's see that first one. This one should be rollback also. And on rabbits, there's also an undercoat. Um, some of the undercoat has ticking on it, ticking in it, um, which would be, could be important to your fur type. If your fur type is not supposed to have ticking or any imperfections, if it's supposed to be black, it's supposed to be black. Um, let me see if he has another one. It looks like just those two. Oh, you, you can see it better right here, how it stays when he's petting it, it kind of sticks up. It doesn't roll back into place. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Oops, go back. <clears throat> okay. Um. We are going to talk about the parts of the rabbit and why you need to know these parts. So, like I said before, when you show a rabbit, you're showing the whole rabbit. You are basically performing a vet check on that rabbit. Um, you're going to check its eyes for cloudiness. You're going to check to make sure that it blinks when you touch. You don't want to touch it, but you get close to it. And if it blinks, then it's not blind. You want to check it for cloudiness and you're going to open it like this. Make sure that it doesn't have, that it looks like a normal eye, right? If you look in it and somebody has kind of a cloudiness on it or when your rabbit has a cloudiness, then that could be um, indicative of blindness or um, some other problems. 
You're going to check its nose. If it's super runny and everything, it could have snuffles, um, which is basically the rabbit version of a cold. Um, you're going to check its teeth. So having a rabbit means that you have to handle it all the time. You have to be able to flip it over. When you flip it over, you'll check its teeth. Make sure it has four teeth. They're not overgrown like we talked about. Um, you're going to check its ears. You're going to check that it doesn't have any mites in there. When you check, you look in there and you can even show the judge a little bit. Um, if, if it has mites, it's going to have little black, um, little black specks in there. Okay. Um, you're going to check, you're going to check its hawks to make sure that it doesn't have sore hawks. Um, you're going to check each toenail to make sure it's clipped right. You're gonna check the belly for any abscesses. If you're in a cage that's mostly wire, you wanna check that every once in a while because if one of those wires comes loose, then it could, it could cut their belly and they could get an abscess and um, get an infection from that. Um, you are going to check its fur. You're going to check that it has the right body type. For semi-arches, you are supposed to have two to four fingers width at, before the hump. So from the neck, like right on the neck, it should have two to four um, fingers width before, it, before its rump, before it turns into the saddle of the rabbit. Um, you're gonna check its dewlap to make sure it's not, doesn't have any sores on it. And, Okay, so it's really important that you guys know the parts of the animal because you're going to be presenting on it. Um, we're going to talk about cuts of meat. This is another reason to know the parts of the rabbit. So then you know why they're, they're ranking things higher in the R best standard of perfection. If that rabbit is mainly sold for its fur, the things that are going to place higher it's, is going to be its fur. If it's its body, they're going to look at those places. So they're gonna look at the loin and the hip. Those are gonna be big, um, big numbers. So they're gonna rank that rabbit mostly on that. If it's a commercial breed rabbit, they're going to make sure that these, the areas that they're going to sell it on, cause they're going to sell on the back, the shoulder, the ribs, the hind leg and the leg, that's gonna be your cuts of meat. And so you want to make sure that those are good cuts of meat. Um, tattooing your rabbit. The left ear is always reserved for your personal tattoo or your 4-H tattoo. Um, in you in a county, we will be tattooing this year. Um, so the left ear is going to have the 4-H tattoo or your personal tattoo. Some breeders will tattoo um, the ears so that they know which rabbit it came from, what litter it came from um, when they sell it. And the right ear is the Arba registration. It is only Arba. If you have a tattoo in that ear and it's not an Arba registration, it's not Arba registered, then you actually can't show an Arba. Um, they're very strict on those rules. Oh, do we have a... Um, rabbit health. I'm gonna touch on this just barely because my knowledge on this is not as updated as somebody like your vet, your local vet is gonna be. Um, myxomatosis, there's, so the RHD, RCV, VHD, whatever you wanna call it, the viral hemorrhagic disease, that's the big one that you're hearing about right now. Um, it shuts down rabbit shows around the country, um, is highly contagious and can be transmitted over short distances with, in moist air. So if your cough, if your rabbit is coughing or something, it can be transmitted to a rabbit right next to it, which is why sometimes they shut down, um, shut down shows. Um, other things to look for, you're gonna look for ear mites, overgrown teeth, sore hawks, abscesses, um, snuffles, which is chronic bacterial infection. It's the same thing as, um, as a human cold, pretty much. Um, okay, so, now I'm gonna talk about the show box. In your show box, 
um, when I was putting this together, there's something big that's that I feel like is missing off of it. We used to use Listerine to shine our rabbit up. That is now illegal. You can't like you're not supposed to do that for rabbit shows, but that's what we used to do. Um, oops. You want in your rabbit show box when you show up to the show, you want nail clippers in there. If you have a long nail, you want to make sure to know how to clip your nails and you want cornstarch in case that in case you cut the nail too far. Um, cornstarch will help stop the bleed. You want a hairbrush in there or um, a rabbit brush. You can have those. Comb. You want, obviously you want your 4-H patch, safety pins, your white shirt and black pants. Um, you want your 4-H patch on your arm while you're showing. You don't want your 4-H patch like on your chest or like you know, somewhere on your front because you're, you're actively handling your rabbit. And if your rabbit gets caught on that, say they get caught like this, then they could get hurt. You could get hurt. Your, you know, your shirt could get torn, stuff like that. So you want to make sure your armband is on your arm. And the thing with a white shirt, you want long sleeves. Rabbits scratch. They have nails that really scratch you. So you want long sleeves to protect yourself. Black pants is more for looks. Um, you just wanna make sure you look sharp. And because you're showing rabbit specifically, you want your hair tied back because you don't want your rabbit, um, you don't want that to become a safety hazard. Um, rubbing alcohol and Q-tips, those are important to clean your, um, your rabbit's ear with. Neosporin, especially if your rabbit has sore hawks, you can put Neosporin on it and wrap it. Um, I did not put gauze on that list, but gauze should also be on that list. Um, baby oil. Okay, don't use baby oil on their fur. The baby oil is only for their ears if they have ear mites or something like that. Now I'll say this isn't really just a show box. It's like your general rabbit health box because if you are at show, you probably should not have ear mites. Um, that can transfer to the next rabbit and then it just becomes a mess. So if you have ear mites, you should be treating it. Um, but you can have baby oil in your show box or your health box, grooming box, whatever you want to call it. Um, always have rags. <laughs> so if your rabbit is white and it gets dirty, you want something to um, kind of rub that off. You can put water on it and just rub off the dirt or whatever. Um, rags are just nice to have. Carpet. You want your carpet. If you have a rabbit that is white, your carpet should kind of match the fur. So a white rabbit would be like a white carpet. Um, your carpet needs to be a little bigger than the rabbit because you'll be, you'll be moving your rabbit around when you're showing it. Um, and you don't, so you want your carpet to match the fur because your, your rabbit's likely to shed and you don't want a whole bunch of hair on there. It looks just kind of not very good. Um, our best standard of perfection book, you can use that to practice. Say the points in your head over and over. You want a lint roller. Rabbits have a lot of fur, so you want to make sure you look sharp for the show. Um, fitting and grooming. To be show ready, you want to bathe your rabbits. And it's fun because rabbits look really funny when you bathe them. Uh, make sure, though, that you don't get um, any water in their ear. That can, that can cause a lot of things wrong. Um, don't get water in their ear. Uh, make sure to clean their ears before the show. You want to brush their fur. Um, sometimes, a lot of times actually, your rabbit's going to be shedding in the middle of showtime because our fairs are in the middle of the summer. It's hot. Rabbits are shedding. Um, so just make sure you brush it as much as you can so the fur is not flying everywhere when you touch your rabbit. Oh, clean. Something that you guys may not know about you need to clean your rabbit scent glands. You should probably be cleaning them or checking them roughly every month or every other month. Does anybody know where their scent glands are located? 
Anybody? Josie? Oh, you'll have to unmute yourself. Let's see. There's scent glands. Um, um, they're like if you go down their body line, um, their scent glands are right there. Mm -hmm. So their scent glands are right on the sides of... Um, of where you're gonna check for their sex basically. And you want to open their scent glands up and it's gonna smell terrible. And it, I mean, it's the worst smell I, I think I've ever smelled. And you want to clean it out. You can clean it out with a Q-tip um, and some rubbing alcohol. Um, you might have to do it piece by piece because sometimes they smell way too bad and they're, it's too much for their habit. So you might have to do it in increments. Um, you want to make sure their feet are cleaned. Um, clean feet are an indication of how you're caring for your rabbit. So if your rabbit is stepping in, in a bunch of poo all the time, you're pro you know, that's an indication to the judges that, Hey, like maybe they don't have the cleanest environment to live in. So, uh, make sure their feet are cleaned and their nails are clipped. Um, this, um, this illustration right here is just where the quick is. The quick is their bloodline in their nail, basically. If you cut it, there's gonna be blood everywhere. Um, if you do end up cutting into the quick by accident, make sure, just put cornstarch on it and just pat it on there. And um, it should, the blood should clot eventually, um, but it will look terrible. Rabbits is great because of public speaking. I, I mentioned that. Um, so make sure that the first time that when you go into show, that's not the first time you were speaking your story out loud, right? Make sure to practice that before you get to the show. Um, showing a rabbit. Quick question, trivia question. How many teeth does a rabbit have? Josie? 24. Ooh, good guess, but no. Anybody else? Avery? Oops, hold on. I'll have to ha have you unmute. Twenty two. Twenty two? Ooh, good guess, but no, it is 28 teeth. How many can you see? You can only see the four. You just check the four that get overgrown all the time. So, um, okay, when you're showing your rabbit, you're basically doing a vet check. I told you guys about this. What you're gonna do is you're going to tell your story. You want to, first off, you wanna thank your judge that's there. Usually they're a volunteer. Always thank your judge, it, it'll get you points, I promise. Um, well, I had a, oh, I didn't grab it. Um, so you need to know the parts of your animal because you'll be checking all of them. You'll even be checking the tail for screw tail or right tail, which is basically the tail that kind of lays to the side and can't go the other direction. Um, because when you get older, the judge may switch you with your competitors. Um, it's super important to be in control of your rabbit. Um, the very first year that I showed my rabbit, okay, my rabbit was great big, and I'm this tiny human at that time. I am eight years old, and I'm just small, and this rabbit is probably a third of the size of me, and it's a black rabbit. And my competitor's rabbit, no, sorry, my rabbit, I looked away from my rabbit and it went and it hopped after the other rabbit and it took a chunk of hair out of the other rabbit. I obviously did not have control over my rabbit, right? I, I put my rabbit back into place. You know, I was really mad, but then I offered, 
the hair back to my competitor that he had ripped out because it's white hair in this black um this black rabbit's mouth so I I ripped it out of his mouth and then I was like do you want this back and he took it and put it in his pocket so make sure to have control of your rabbits I definitely didn't earn any points for that it was a funny story now but you want to make sure that your rabbit's not going after another rabbit. Um, oh, the other thing with your story, you want to know the points in the ARBA standard of perfection. You want to say your points, what type of body your rabbit is, what fur type your rabbit is. And, um, and you also, it, it, it helps to introduce yourself and kind of where you're from, who you are too. Um, the judge is interested in hearing your story. So include all of that. Um, rabbit handling. Make sure to start as soon as you get your rabbit. Your rabbit project starts as soon as you get your rabbit. Make sure to be gentle with it. Uh, make sure to be safe with your rabbit. Don't handle your rabbits by your ears. It used to be common practice to grab the rabbit by the ears and, and just and by its scruff and just go up with it, that's so bad for it. Don't do that. Um, if you have somebody new handling your rabbit, make sure you're supervising them. If there's somebody that doesn't normally handle your rabbit, make sure they're handling it correctly. You want to protect your investment, right? Um, if you're, okay, so if your rabbit is struggling in your arms, you're trying to get it in your arms, Set it down, let it go for a second, let it calm down, and then try and pick it up back up again. You don't want it struggling the entire time it's in your arms because it could jump out of your arms, it could hurt itself, all that. Um, you want to make them, help them feel secure. And when you are having them on the carpet, you want half turns, uh, or not half turns, sorry. I don't know why I put that on there. Quarter turns, quarter turns, quarter turns. Turn your rabbit like this, set it down. Turn your rabbit like this, set it down. Um, if you don't take your rabbit all the way off your carpet, your rabbit's leg might get kind of stuck on the carpet and then it twists its leg. So you could really hurt it that way. I am going to play this video for you guys. Can you hear it? No. Um, There we go. Now can you guys hear it? Act around them and how we respond yeah. to them. It's it's helpful for the rabbit if we're quiet and calm and handle them very gently. Equally, it's very, very important to have enough hide areas so that if they're afraid, they can get away. Rabbits have very fragile skeletons, so when you're handling them, it's important that you do it gently but firmly so that they're confident in you and don't struggle and so that the handling is not too rough so as to cause the rabbit any damage. In order to seem less scary, it's worthwhile letting your rabbits get used to you at their level and offering some tasty treats for further encouragement. Sometimes you will have to handle your rabbit and frequent gentle handling from when they're young will make this much easier. It's important to be very calm and gentle and to move slowly when you're handling your rabbit so that you don't appear as a threat and you don't make your rabbit frightened of you. It's important to handle rabbits very, very carefully. They have a very fragile spine that can quite easily be damaged if they're handled incorrectly. If they're dropped or if they jump out of your arms, that can result in serious or sometimes even fatal injury. And stressed rabbits are much more likely to become ill. So it's important not to make your rabbit frightened or distressed by the handling that you're trying to do. The aim is to 
let your rabbit see you as a friend and companion. And this may take some time and effort, but as you can see, it's ultimately very rewarding. Right, so I'm going to attempt to pick up Buddy and it's very important to approach them gently and calmly and preferably not to loom over them too much. And what you need to do is to support the back end and the spine very carefully. And I've got him cradled against my body, sort of lying along my forearm. As you can see, I'm holding Buddy very gently using minimal restraint and supporting him with my forearm. His feet are resting on my body and his spine and his hind quarters are supported by my arm and therefore protected. If he wants to, he can hide his eyes under my elbow, making certain that we don't block his nose and so that he can breathe freely. And this is a very nice, comforting and comfortable, secure grip for a rabbit. Although rabbits are often children's pets, all younger children should be supervised interacting with rabbits at all times. And only adults and responsible older children should pick them up directly. And this is to avoid accidents and damage. If you're uncertain how to handle your rabbit, ask for a demonstration from your vet or a veterinary nurse. And if your rabbit is showing a change in behavior, for example, unexpected aggression or hiding all the time, ask advice from your vet as this may be a sign of stress or discomfort. Your vet may then be able to refer you to a qualified animal behaviourist. Okay, um, and with that, with the rabbit handling, make sure when you bathe them, you have to be extra careful. Um, they can slip and um, really hurt themselves. So when they're when you're bathing, make sure you're wearing our long sleeve shirt and um, be very careful with them. Oops. Um, okay, I have these resources on here. Um, so this one is probably my favorite. This is made from an extension co-op co in, um, in Canada. They did a really good job with it. Texas has some good ones. Um, Florida has some good ones. And Purdue also has um, some good resources for you. Um, does anybody have any questions?